see every column from the poll table. All right. <clears throat> How many rows are we showing from the poll table? We're showing all the columns. How many rows are we showing? All of them. The general rule is the way select statements work is unless you otherwise specify, you're going to get everything. All right? That has interesting implications when we start talking about deletes and updates. Right? Because if you're not careful, you're deleting everything unless you specify what you do want to delete. All right? So, I have now specified what I want as far as rows. That typically comes in with the WHERE clause, but we didn't do that, so by default we're getting everything. So if I copy and paste this into Access here, if I run this, I get a query that shows all the fields from that table for all the rows. Now, this is going to give it to me, and the official answer to this is, this will give it to me in the order that the database feels like giving it to me. All right? So there's no guarantee of what order I'm going to get it in, as a general rule, if we're talking about SQL, the bigger, the bigger picture. I know a little bit about access, so I know it's going to give it to me in primary key order. So if I look, sure enough, poll number one is first, poll, poll number two is second, poll number three is third. All right. I can tack on, though, an order by clause to guarantee the order that this is going to appear in. So, I could say order by question. What's question? Question is one of the columns in that table. All right. So if I want it in a specific order, I need an order by clause. Don't assume that the database is going to give it to you in the order that you want. And now notice that it's actually in a slightly different order. Instead of 1, 2, 3, it's in 1, 3, 2. Let's add another poll for sports. How many games will the Browns win in 2013? If I go and run this query again, I'm going to see all of them. of category. Why do I see them all regardless of category? Because I haven't really done anything to get rid of or only see one category. That's going to be our next step. <clears throat> How could I limit this to only show the technology questions? I have, to put where condition. I have to put a where condition. And in this case I could say Select star from poll where category ID equals one. Now notice a couple things. Notice that my SQL statement, not really concerned about case sensitivity. All right. This could be in all caps and it would work the same way. Notice that one is not enclosed in quotes. All right? That's one thing a lot of folks find confusing in, in programming in general is when to put things in quotes, when not to put things in quotes. All right? 
In a nutshell, you put things in quotes if it's like a string, what's called a string literal. In other words, if I wanted something that was an exact match, all right, I would put it um, in there. So if I was looking for a question, you know, or if I was, I don't know, if I was looking for the, the category of technology, I'd put the word technology. If it's a data column, which the other things are, if it's a number, you don't put it within quotes. Okay, we're going to build on this. We had, we had three SQL statements. We're going to go and we're going to create this in the .NET framework one piece at a time. All right, we'll do the first one, the second one, and the third one. So let's go in and crack open our Visual Studio. Create file new website. <clears throat> Gonna be an empty website. I'm gonna put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call it Polls App. And there it goes, it's creating a folder in the web config file, etc. Alright. It doesn't give us any files because we defined it as a um, empty website. I want to go out here and I want to put my database in a place where the polls app can find it easily. And I'm also going to put it in a place so if I move this application, i.e. when you finish your application and you upload it to me, that I can easily find it. So I'm going to go into this polls app folder and I'm going to create a folder with this specific name. App underscore data. It doesn't have to be uppercase, I suppose. App underscore data. And then I'm going to move that database, that access database, into there. Oops. Now let me do it because I have access open. Alright, now I should be able to. Alright. So I put it in there, and now, now we're back to the model where everything's in one folder. Right? If you go in and you were finished with this, if this was an assignment, you could just zip up the folder and send it to me, and everything should be okay. All right, so let's go in here and let's create our default page. And our default page, we're simply going to list every query in the database. I'm sorry, every poll in the database. All right, so I'm going to go up to File, New, File, Web Form, called Default ASPX, put code behind in a separate file. Select Master Page, I haven't created a Master Page. Now again, do keep in mind that when I go over these examples in class, um, you know, I'm focusing on just one thing. It's still a good idea to create master pages. Don't forget about them just because that was last week's lecture. All right, uh, it's still a good idea to do them. So I'll click Add here. Now this page 
I want to eventually look like the first page that I talked about way back when we first started this assignment. That is, I want to have a drop-down where I pick the category, and then I want to have a list of all the queries, or all the polls for that category. But we're not going to do it in one leap. We're going to do it incrementally. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, a, a page that takes and displays a query showing all of the fields and all of the rows from the poll table. So, go in design mode. And I'm going to do this in pairs. All right, I'm going to now go into this data section which is a section we haven't been in yet. All right. We talked a little bit when we talked about menus, about binding stuff together, right? And we said that we could have our data coming from one place and have it bound to a visual control. So we had our sitemap XML file that contained the data about what pages were on our site. And then we found that we could bind that to a menu or a tree view or to the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs actually happened, the binding was done automatically, right? But for the sitemap and for the, the, the tree view, we had to manually go in and bind it. We're going to have the same idea here, all right? So for database interactivity, typically you're going to have two things, two pieces, two components. You're going to have the visual part the GUI part, the user interface part, and you're going to have the database connection part, all right, and the database part. So I'm going to start and I'm going to pull that I want a SQL data source on my page. So I'm going to go and bring that on my page. And I get to click configure data source. I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to refresh my application here. Because if you remember, I created a folder and moved something in there after I created it. I thought. That's weird. I'm trying to refresh the view. Okay, there you go. There we go. And there's our app data folder. All right. So I created my SQL data source. All right. This is the database component. All right, I'm going to click here to configure it. Configure data source. It's going to create, it's going to ask me to create a data connection associated with this data source. A data source actually consists of a couple of things. It consists of what database you want to connect to and the actual data that you want to pull out of the database. So we first have to point to that database that we've created. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on that and there it is. All right. 
That's why it's important for me to hit refresh for that to appear. Because we'll talk a little bit about like how this could go wrong. All right, because this can go wrong a little bit. But that appears. All right, I can select that. I can click new connection. Oh, my bad. I don't click new connection. I click that. All right. I click next. And then I can save it in the application co uh, configuration file as something. And it's suggesting connection string. That's as good a name as anything, so I'm going to take it. All right. Now I'm actually asking for what data I want. All right. And we can do this a couple different ways. We can do this in graphics mode, or we can do it by actually putting in the SQL statement. Well, we didn't come here today to take the easy way out, right? So we're going to actually write the SQL statement. And the SQL statement is select star from poll. All right, remember that was our first SQL statement. I click next. I get a chance to test my query to see like if I made any typos or anything like that. I didn't. And I can hit finish. So now we have the data source. This data source is comprised of two pieces. It's comprised of a connection, and it's comprised of the specific data that we want to pull from the database. That connection gets put in the web config file. So let's look at the web config file. All right, there's the name that I stored it under, connection string. This shows I've done it right. The pipe, the word data directory, and the end pipe. That shows I've done it correctly. If I have not done it correctly, I'm going to see the actual physical path. I'm going to see C colon backslash blah, 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 blah. The data directory is sort of a code name for that app data folder. You can actually configure it to point somewhere else, but for our purposes, we're going to keep it simple. So it's pointing to that, and it's pointing it correctly. How could it go wrong? What could we do wrong? Let me do a wrong connection string. I could go and say I want a SQL data source, configure data source. I could click on that new connection like I almost did. Almost nothing. I did, but I then backed out of it. And I could say it's an access data file, browse, Desktop, polls app, app data. All right. Yes, I want to save it. And then I could do my query here. the same, right? So why is one way right and one way wrong? I just kind of went about it a little bit different way. You have to really look at the web config file to see why the second way is wrong. If we look at that web config file and compare these things, I stand corrected. It did it correctly. <laughs> All right. So, okay, there could be an enhancement with the newer version of that. In previous uh, versions of Visual Studio, if you did it that way, you'd see the actual physical path there. Bottom line is you don't want to see the physical path. You want to see the relative path to it. That will allow you to upload your code, me to download it to my machine, and everything will work fine. All right? Now, I'm going to get rid of this connection string because assuming you have one database, and again, not all applications have one database. It's conceivable for there to be an application with two databases. But 
As long as you have one database, you only need one connection strain. So the first time you create a SQL data source, you're going to define a connection strain. From here on in, you are simply going to point to that connection strain that you created. All right? So if I were to create a second SQL data source, let me get rid of this guy. If I were to create another second SQL data source on this page, and it came to configure data source, I would simply pick that connection string that I created the first time. Okay, so we have a connection string. Don't worry, we're going to go over this like a million times. All right, so this is the first one. We have the data component. We now need the GUI component. And there's a number of GUI components that you can pick. The first one that we're going to pick is a grid view. And a grid view is good at showing um, essentially a table of items. So if I want to show a table that contains all the, all the uh, fields, all the columns from that table, a grid view is as good as any. So I can go and drag, oops, I can go and drag that grid view on my page. All right. Here's where I marry the two together. Here's where I bind the two. Choose data source. I only have the one data source because I deleted all the other ones right after I created them. Pick SQL data source one. And notice now that that looks like the fields that are in the data source. All right. So I go and run this. We're going to see a list of all the polls from the poll table. And there we go. I'm going to repeat this, all right, with less talking because I kind of chatted my way through this. So I'm going to get rid of this. We get rid of the SQL data source, and I'm going to go in my web config file and get rid of the connection strings. So I'm going to start as though I was I had just gotten into this application and I just put the database in the app data folder and clicked refresh folder, and I'm going to rewind and start that over again um, without so much commentary. So I'll go to SQL data view, configure data source, pick the database that's listed there. Next. I want to save this connection because I will use this for every other database connection in this app. What do I want to see? I'm going to specify the custom SQL statement. Select star from poll. <coughs> Next. Test the query. Make sure it works. Finish. All right. That's the data component. Now for the visual component, I'm going to grab a grid view. That's a grid of data. This is kind of what I want. I will go and select the data source. And then I can run it. And there we go. Question? Yeah. Is uh, ASP.NET acting as a database manager then? No. I'm not really sure like what the implication of your question is, but it, it asks the database for the information, and the database provides that. 
um, like an end user would use this or no? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, if we were doing our poll site for real, yeah. we would have a page like this where the user coming in could see the list of polls. All right, so we would format it better, you know, we would make it look like a completed page. We might hide the poll and the category IDs because those really don't mean anything to the user. But yeah, it's absolutely the code that, that, um, that we would use. It's sort of a front end. We're creating the user interface for our database. On the drawings that you drew or on the schematics, I thought there always had to be a database manager in between the end user and the SQL database. Well, access is a little bit, uh, is, a, is a bit of the, the um, exception of the rule. Uh, consider access to be the database manager here, even though that's not 100% accurate. So if I use MySQL, would I be able to do the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Provided you had the drivers for it. You'd have to have the drivers installed for it, which, of course, if you had MySQL installed, you'd have the, the drivers installed for it. Yes? Um, when you saved it as a connection string, would you be able to use that regular HTML, or is that an ASPX, like, is that like a .NET thing? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you? The connection string... I mean, they, they came up with that name for it. I saw that, but, like, there's no, like... You couldn't do this in like regular HTML, right? Like you'd have to, you'd have to have like a platform like that. Like right. You, you plain HTML does not interact with databases. Okay. You would need you would need some okay. server side scripting. Okay. And again, you know, um, even if you're talking about doing database interactivity in another language, you know, the specific components are going to be different, but there's still going to be something that you use to connect to a database, something like the connection string. Now, if we look at the web config file here, let's say we converted from access to SQL Server. Ideally, we should just have to change that connection string and provide the parameters that SQL Server wants, and this code should work as it is now. So. We're sort of abstracting, and we're using these OLAYDB connections to a database. Um, and so our code doesn't need to know like the guts of it. It just says, hey, this is a database I want to connect to, and the classes built in within ASP.NET sort of provide uh, a way of talking to the database. Let's change it to add the order by clause. That was one of the things that we wanted to do, right? So, I have two things on the page. SQL data source and a grid view. Which of them do I want to change to add the order by clause to? The data source, right? Remember, this is the actual data. This is the, just the manner that it's being presented. So I can go in here, configure data source. This time through, some of the things are already filled in because I've already done this once. Next, next. And I can then tack on the order by. And what did I say? Question. Test my query. Still looks like it works. And then finish. Now, I think it's a good idea to test your query um, like that. Remember, you, you only want to be fighting a single battle at a time. All right? In other words, if I didn't test this query and there was a problem with it, and I ran it and it blew up, it wouldn't necessarily be clear where the problem is. Is the problem with the query, or is the problem the way that I configured the SQL data source, or is the problem with the way I set up the grid view, or what's the problem? By doing this and testing it, I know, hey, that SQL statement's correct. All right, so if I have a problem now, it's something, <coughs> excuse me, it's something else. It's <coughs> excuse me, it's not the SQL statement. So I can then go in and finish and run this. And 
it's the same except it is now sorted alphabetically 